Ben Norton tweeted an article in the midst of uh, Cory Booker selling out to Big Pharma and Twitter learning that Cory Booker is doing that. So all of uh, the principled left on Twitter just unleashed holy hell on Cory Booker's head, which is exactly what I wanted to see. Um, and this article that Ben Norton tweeted really is a reminder of who Cory Booker is. So the article is from 2013. It's on CNBC.com, and it's titled, Hedge Funders Couldn't Be Happier About This Politician. Of course, they're referring to Cory Booker, so they say this, A new senator is coming to Washington, and hedge fund managers couldn't be more excited. Democrat Cory Booker beat Republican challenger Steve Lonigan in a special election this week to represent New Jersey in the U.S. Senate. Booker, now the mayor of Newark, has received financial support from some of the biggest names in investing. Hedge funders helped Booker crush Lonigan in fundraising. Booker collected $11.2 million to Lonigan's $1.35 million as of October 4th, according to the Star-Ledger. Their reasons appear varied, but at least two specific policy points likely guided their cash to the charismatic former Rhodes Scholar. Booker's focus on education reform and support for Israel. So two beliefs where Cory Booker is openly right-wing. Apparently he's in favor of all these, uh, you know, private schools, and he hates public schools, and uh, he reflexively sides with Israel over the Palestinians, even when Israel does their bomb fests in Gaza, where Netanyahu kills minimum 80% civilians, including over 500 children. Cory Booker, Mr. Principled Liberal Democrat over here, he goes, oh, dead kids, dead women and children, uh, bombing civilians, taking out hospitals and, and schools and, and the only power play in Gaza. What are you, an anti-Semite for calling that out? How dare you? I'm on the side of Israel. Now, uh, here's the real reason why the hedge funds were ecstatic, and we learned about it recently. We've known it for a while now, to be fair. Cory Booker is a puppet. That's what he is. There's no question. It's not up in the air. Ooh, I don't know. What do you mean? Cory Booker? Well, he's got a... He's a Democrat. He's got a D by his name. He must be good, right? Wrong. Bernie Sanders proposed an amendment to cut the price of U.S. pharmaceuticals massively by importing them from Canada. Cory Booker voted against it. He voted against it because he took $300,000 from the pharmaceutical industry, and the way politics works is, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. So, New Jersey has a bunch of pharmaceutical companies there. He doesn't want to piss off one of his key donors in his state. So, hey, if I got to vote the other direction and make it so that medication costs double, sometimes triple, sometimes more than that, uh, you know, here as it does in Canada, it is what it is. And you might have to die because you can't afford your fucking medication because Cory Booker's got to get more campaign contributions from the pharmaceutical company and he's got to be a loyal little puppet. And then he does the grotesque dodge where he tries to pull the wool over everybody's eyes or tries to make convince himself so he can fucking sleep at night. No, the only reason I voted against it is because the FDA, it's not meeting FDA standards. So what are you going to do? You got to have, if you had a provision that said, okay, FDA standards, well, then I'd vote for it. Oh, please, Corey. The standards and regulations in Canada are even more strict than in the U.S. Where's the epidemic of people dropping dead in Canada from bad medication? It doesn't exist. You made it up. So they have stronger regulations. By the way, a lot of the drugs that we're talking about here are made in the U.S. and then shipped to Canada. So, we're making them here anyway. So the idea is to get the same medication for cheaper because, you know, some people actually care about the American people and don't want them dying and don't want them going broke paying for fucking medicine. But you, you're a loathsome scumbag Wall Street sellout and big pharma sellout and just sell out across the board so you can't help yourself. You have to vote against the people, while simultaneously fishing for praise because he's sick. The next day he gives a speech, You know, we can't repeal the Affordable Care Act because what about the people? What about the people whose lives are being saved by the Affordable Care Act? We can't get rid of it. You just voted to make the, the medication for those people significantly more costly. That's going to have effects, Corey. Some people might die, Corey. Some people might go broke as a result of that, Corey. How disgusting are you? 
to grandstand a day after you stab regular people in the back. And this was also a day after he did a he did uh he testified against uh Attorney General Jeff Sessions. So it, Jeff Sessions is trying to become attorney general. This is the it was apparently unprecedented that a sitting senator testifies against another senator. There I guess there was a gentleman's agreement that oh no, if it's one of my colleagues and it's a senator, I will not testify against them. He's like, "You know what? I'm going to testify against him." So he thought he bought the brownie points to get away with now I'm going to stab the American people in the back by voting to keep their uh, their prescription drug costs higher. He thought he bought enough brownie points, and he thought he bought, uh, you know, a, a news cycle where that wouldn't come up. What do you mean? No, no, no. Give me praise. Give me praise. I just spoke against Jeff Sessions. I'd be mean, bad. Bad Republican, right? I spoke against him because I, I care so much about liberal values and the people, and that's... So don't even look at the fact that I voted to stab people in the back on drug prices. You're sick, Corey. Don't come around here with your bullshit. Go home. It's over. It's done. You're not going to be president of the United States. You pissed off every single principled progressive in the country with that vote. So, um, you think you have a shot? There was a, a corporate Democrat, bigger than you, more popular than you, an A-list celebrity whose turn it was who got beat because she was a corporate Democrat. The same people that were pissed at Hillary Clinton for being Hillary Clinton and her abysmal record, they're the same people that you just pissed off. Guess what? You can't win an election without those people, bitch. So, like I said, go home. Go home. You're lucky if you, you know, win again in New Jersey. You probably will, but for President of the United States, you you would get so walloped and destroyed and crushed in a Democratic primary that I actually kind of want to see it. So bring it on, because not on my fucking watch. I'll come out here and rip you every single goddamn day because you're a soulless bastard. And all the other progressive media outlets will do the same. And you're so bad at this that even mainstream outlets have to cover how smarmy and slimy and gross you are. So go home. We're done with your soulless, standard politician ways. That day is done. It's a new era in American politics.